Hey devs, in this video, you'll learn how to set up an automated build for your Android apps using GitHub Actions. We'll answer the question of just what is GitHub Actions? We'll quickly review the concepts of an automated build and continuous integration. And then finally, we'll walk through how to quickly set up your own simple continuous integration pipeline for Android using GitHub Actions. Now, I've been happily using GitHub Actions in several of my own projects for quite some time now. And by the end of this video, you'll be ready to do the same for your own projects. And it's all coming up right after this. Hey devs, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Nate, and this channel is dedicated to building great software and helping others do the same. So if you wanna be notified of future content, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Now, just what is GitHub Actions? And how does it make our lives as Android developers just a little bit easier? GitHub Actions is a framework for building custom workflows for software development processes. Want to build an app? Maybe you want to deploy a web service. Or maybe you want to onboard first-time contributors to your open source repository. You can do all of these things and more using GitHub Actions. With GitHub Actions, your code lives in GitHub as it quite possibly already does. And because your code already lives in GitHub, setting up these custom developer workflows is a breeze when using GitHub Actions. This means we can create a continuous integration pipeline for our Android apps without ever leaving GitHub, thereby reducing the number of different services, tokens, and user interfaces that we have to deal with. In particular, this is a huge win for anyone looking to set up and understand their first automated build. Creating your first automated build and continuous integration pipeline is now as simple as adding a single file to your pre-existing GitHub repository. Now quickly, before we create our first workflow with GitHub Actions, let's take a small step back and make sure we have a basic understanding of what we mean when I say automated build or continuous integration. Put quite simply, continuous integration refers to the practice of regularly checking code into a common repository and validating that code on each check-in. That validation then likely takes the form of some type of automated build. In the case of an Android app, every time code is merged or checked in, we may want to run Gradle tasks such as lint or test or assemble. If all of these tasks succeed, we can feel confident that our code is functional and meets any and all code quality standards defined by our team. Now, if you aren't working in a team, a continuous integration pipeline is still a great tool to have at your disposal for all of these same reasons. It's just as easy for us to break our own code as it is to break someone else on our teams. So having that continuous integration pipeline in place helps us ensure that we are building the right thing at the right time, whether alone or in a large team. Now that we understand the general idea of an automated build, let's create our own. The first thing we need to do is create a workflow. And to do this, we're going to create a new working branch. So I'll navigate down to my terminal and I'll simply create a new git branch. git checkout dash b any slash actions. All right, now I have a new working branch to add my GitHub actions workflow. Now, workflows are created as YAML files that include definitions for several important things, including when should the workflow run, what should the development environment look like when the workflow is run, and finally, what tasks should be carried out by the workflow. Now, we're going to create a new workflow called Android Build. And to do this, we need to follow a very specific file path. So to get started, we're going to come over to our project window on the left-hand side of the screen, we're going to right click on our root directory. We're going to navigate to new file. And then we're going to create the file at this specific path. We're going to type dot github slash workflows dot github slash workflows is the specific path that the GitHub actions tooling will look for when discovering new workflows in our project. Now we'll type slash again, and now we're free to define the specific file for this workflow. So in this case, we're going to call this android underscore build dot YML. 
and then we'll hit enter. Now, like I said, that .github slash workflows directory is a special directory recognized by GitHub. Any valid workflows stored in that directory on your repository's default branch will be recognized, managed, and run by the GitHub Actions tooling. So that means that we can start to add and build to this workflow, but until it's actually merged into our master branch, it won't be run by the tooling. Now that our new workflow YAML file is created, let's give it a name. In this case, we'll match our file name and type the following, name colon Android build. This is the name that will be displayed in the workflows list in the actions tab under your GitHub repository. Next, we want to define when our workflow should run. Workflows can be run in response to a variety of events, including commits, pushes, as well as on a schedule or even manually if you so choose. A great place to start, however, for a new continuous integration pipeline is to validate code changes when a new pull request is created. We can do this using the following expression on colon, the on keyword here essentially is defining what actions that this workflow should be run in response to. And then we can type pull request. So this is a sort of built-in uh, trigger that the GitHub Actions tooling knows how to respond to. And it'll mean that any of the, the build tasks that we define later on in this workflow file will be run anytime a pull request is created. Now we're ready to define the tasks that will be run on each pull request. And to do this, we need to create a job. And we can do that by simply starting off typing jobs, followed by a colon, and then build colon, and we'll hit enter one more time. Now a job is essentially just an environment specification and a set of tasks, but every workflow must have at least one job. Now that we have our job created, we need to define the environment or the runner that will be used to execute all of the tasks we will later define. Now GitHub Actions support using your own custom runners, such as a custom Docker container, or you can use the provided GitHub hosted runners. In our case, we can use a GitHub runner to build our Android app by using runs dash on colon Ubuntu dash latest. By default, the Ubuntu latest runner comes pre-installed with various versions of Android SDKs, build tools, support repositories, and more. You can see a detailed list of everything installed on the GitHub runners by exploring their readme page in GitHub, and you can find the link to that in the video description down below. Now that we've defined the environment for our job, we can start defining the steps that will actually be run to validate our Android build. First, we'll define our steps by adding the new steps section in our YAML file here. And once we hit enter, we can add our first task. Now, the first thing we need to do is to actually check out the code for this specific branch. So we'll use a dash and type uses followed by colon. And now we're going to use a pre-built action available as part of the GitHub actions tooling that will let us check out our code. And we can use this action by typing actions slash checkout at v1. So this is defining a, a version of the checkout action and all of the, the backend information about what that action actually does is abstracted away from us. So this is one of the powerful things about GitHub Actions is that you can package together functionality and then reuse them with single lines in your YAML files. Now that we have our code checked out, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, configure the JDK for our Android build. So for that, we're gonna start off by providing a custom name for this task. So we'll say dash name colon, and in this case, we're gonna call it set up JDK. Then we'll hit enter, and now we're gonna use another custom made action that's predefined for us. In this case, it's actions slash setup dash Java at V1. And now that action has some properties that you can configure on it. So in this case, we'll type with colon, we'll hit enter, and we're going to customize the version of Java used for this build. 
So now within all of these steps, we're going to be using Java version eight. Now we can start actually adding specific build tasks for our Android application. So we're going to start by running our tests. So we're going to create a new task again, using dash name, and we're just going to call this run tests. And then we're going to hit enter and we're going to type run. The run command here essentially is going to take in a command line input. So for us, we're going to type dot slash Gradle W test, just like we would if we were running this Gradle task from the command line within the terminal on our development machine. So now the run tests command is complete. And now we can move on to actually assembling our application. So now we'll again, create a new task here, this time called build project. Then we're going to define our run task. And in this case, it's dot slash Gradle W assemble. And so this is going to run the assemble Gradle task for this project. And now that's really it. We now have a valid GitHub actions workflow that will validate our tests and build our Android app anytime a new PR is created. Now, the last thing we really need to do is to test this out. So like I mentioned before, the GitHub actions tooling will only recognize our new workflow once it's merged into our default branch. So in the case of this project, that is the master branch. So before we can test our workflow, I need to merge this new workflow file into the master branch. Once it's merged, we can test out the workflow for real. So I'll go back to the command line and I will go ahead and add all the changes. And I will commit those and just say, set up GitHub actions workflow. And I will push that up to my remote repository on GitHub. All right. So now we need to go over to GitHub and go ahead and merge that in. All right, so here I am in back in GitHub. I'll create a pull request for this. And I will just go ahead and quickly merge this in and I'll delete that working branch. Okay, so now we're back here in Android Studio and we're ready to test out that our workflow is going to run on pull requests. So we're gonna come back down here and check out our master branch. We're gonna pull in our changes, excellent. And now we're gonna check out a new branch. Git checkout dash B any slash, we'll just call this test. So now we just wanna make some type of change to our project. So in this case, maybe I'm just going to add a space here and I'll go ahead and commit that. Add a space. Now I'll go ahead and push these changes up. And once those changes are pushed up to GitHub, now we're ready to create a pull request and validate our workflow. So here we are. I'm gonna create a new pull request for that test branch. So now I have created that pull request and we should now be able to validate that our build is running. So notice here, we see Android build and it says that it's queued waiting to run this check. If we come over to the actions tab, we'll now see that our Android build is showing up in our workflows. And we'll now see that it is being run in response to add a space. And it's also being run in response to our initial pull request. If we go ahead and click into this, we can actually watch what is happening here. And we can also actually view the configuration file that is being used for this specific instance of that run. So now back here in our pull request, when that workflow has finished or it has failed, it's going to update this status indicator so that our pull request can let us know whether or not any of these workflows succeeded, failed, uh, or timed out for any reason. Now you may eventually wanna prevent the merging of PRs that have failing workflows, but we'll leave that to a future video. Eventually, you should see that all the checks have finished and you should be able to check the results of those workflows in the actions tab. So here we've seen that our Android build has successfully completed. And if we navigate back to the actions tab, then if we click over here on the left where it says build, we can see the status and log messages for each individual step in our workflow. 
So we see here, we have the checkout action that we defined. We have our setup JDK action, and then we have our tests and build project. So if we open up build project, you can see here, it ran our assemble command, and we can see all of the associated output with that. And eventually we see build successful in 39 seconds. Now back here in our pull request, if we see that all of our workflows have completed successfully, we should be able to merge that code in with some level of confidence that everything was built correctly. All right, congrats. You now have a functional, if yet still simple, continuous integration pipeline created for your first project. However, this is just barely the first step into creating a full-blown and fully functional continuous integration pipeline. There are many more things we can accomplish with GitHub Actions. You may want to enforce successful workflows before merging your code. This can help prevent any uh, broken code or code that doesn't adhere to quality guidelines. You may want to run linting tests or unit tests or UI tests to ensure that all of your code is solving the correct problems or adhering to correct guidelines. You may want to store your build artifacts, maybe your APKs, maybe some type of test output. You may also want to add some type of caching mechanism to your build so that future builds are more uh, fast and efficient. And finally, you might want to automate your test and release deployments so sending code out to users is as simple as a merge into your repository. All of these things are possible with GitHub Actions using the same basic framework we've explored in this tutorial. If you want to start learning more, check out the link to the GitHub Actions Getting Started Guide down below in the description. Or you can check out the DevOps and Automation playlist on my own YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope this has helped you understand how to start building your Android apps using GitHub Actions. If you have questions on how to get started or where to go next, I'm happy to connect and chat about using GitHub Actions for your own projects. Until next time, devs.